It used to be that if you wanted to get into the Walksnail FPV system, this was pretty much your only option. This is the Fat Shark Dominator HD goggle, and uh, yeah, I know, there's also the Walksnail Avatar goggle out there. They're the same. They're the exact same goggle. One is black and comes from Walksnail, one is white and comes from Fat Shark. I'm pretty sure they're made in the same factory, even on the same line, and they just come in different colors. So basically, if you wanted to try the Walksnail FPV system, you were stuck spending $600 on this goggle and that's that's before you upgrade the antennas and oh yeah you're gonna upgrade the antennas because the stock antennas that walk snail sends are garbage don't use them you could easily spend another hundred bucks upgrading the antennas yeesh that's a lot of money to try out this system and that's why it was so exciting when cadix announced the new standalone video receiver which is not going to be the topic of this video because it's not out yet but when Cadex did release the new standalone video receiver, I thought, man, this is really a, a knife in the back of Fat Shark. Because Fat Shark makes goggles. And with a standalone video receiver that you can use with any goggles with an HDMI input, why would anybody want to buy these $600 Fat Shark? They're nice goggles, but they don't do analog. They don't do HD0. They don't have an HDMI input. All they do is walk snail. And it sure seems like 150, 200 bucks for a standalone video receiver is going to be very compelling to a lot of people. But Fat Shark is not going to take that lying down, and that's why we have this. This is the new Fat Shark Recon HD. Wait a minute. The Fat Shark Recon HD, didn't they release a Fat Shark Recon HD years ago with HD Zero in it? Yup, they did. And before that, wasn't there the Fat Shark Recon analog goggle that looked exactly like this, but with an analog receiver? Yup, that's true too. In grand Fat Shark tradition of taking an existing design and slightly recycling it to include a new technology, Fat Shark Riff released a version of the Recon Goggle, this time with Walksnail in. And it means that if you're interested in getting into the Walksnail system, there is now a new price point at which you can do it. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. What we've got here is a box goggle from Fat Shark with a built-in Walksnail receiver. Let's run down the specs for these goggles. The screens are 1080p resolution, which is the most that the Walksnail system can provide. However, they only run at 60 FPS. You will not be able to use the 100 FPS low latency mode for the system. It just isn't an option in the menus. And that means you're going to get about 35 to 40 milliseconds latency versus the 25 to 30 milliseconds latency of the 100 FPS mode. The goggles take between 2S and 5S input. That's the same as the more expensive Dominator goggles. Many people have criticized the fact that they're not rated for 6S, but that's just the way it is. It suggests that these are the same internals in terms of the power board and the receiver board as the larger goggles. The goggles have four built-in patch antennas, and I don't have specs on the beam width or gain of the antennas. We're going to take them out, and we're going to fly them, uh, and we're going to see what kind of coverage we get. If you're interested in changing those antennas out for aftermarket antennas, there are no external connectors for that. However, inside the goggles, the antennas are connected with UFL connectors, and it would be relatively easy to modify the case to include SMA plugs or something like that. In fact, there are two plugs right here that you could drill out and install your own SMA connectors if you were interested in putting higher gain antennas on the outside. The goggle has an SD card slot for DVR and for more updates, and it has a joystick, an external power plug, and a bind button, the same as the larger goggles. There's also the DVR record and back out of the menu buttons. Again, the same sort of controls and user interface as the larger goggles. The price is going to be around $270. The goggles come with this XT60 cable for power, and it's got this confusing warning on it, but I think I've figured out what it means. You see, the HC0 goggles came with this power cable, which has a built-in 9-volt regulator. Take a look at the difference. You see the larger plastic housing here? That's the 9-volt regulator. And it means that you can input, uh, well, 
Technically, you can input up to a 6S, although I think they recommend that you don't do that. Um, but you can safely input a higher voltage, and this cable will output just 9 volts, and your HD0 unit won't fry. I think what they're doing here is warning you that this one does not have a built-in regulator and will simply pass through whatever voltage you put in. So in other words, if you plug in a 6S battery to this cable, 6S voltage will come out the other end, and you will potentially fry your your goggles, which are only rated for 5S. This is going to be hard to demonstrate on camera, but these box goggles are not just a screen held up a few inches from your eyes. Fat Shark has a lens system built in that actually makes them look like they are further away than they really are. Here, I'm moving the focus of this camera out to focus on the actual screen image. Uh, and that's good because it reduces eye strain. Uh, I might be able to demonstrate this a little better by popping out this lens. You used to be able to do this with the old Reckon goggles. I assume you still can. You can pop this lens out and now we can actually see that's the exact same focal distance that it was at, but here it is much closer. Uh, and now you literally are just looking at a little screen uh, a few inches from your eyes. Uh, this actually comes into play because these do not have adjustable diopters. So if you have a glasses prescription like mine, your only choice is either to squeeze your glasses inside, inside, which depending on the size of your glasses isn't going to work, or, uh, and Greg French, the or maybe it was Alan who showed me this. One of the guys from Fat Shark showed me this. If you just pop that lens out, you can just put them up in front of your eyes. And in my case, I am nearsighted and I can basically focus on this because it's close enough to my eyes that I can do it. If I put this lens in, it makes them seem like they're further away and I can't focus without a corrective lens. If you were farsighted, uh, I don't know what you would do. I'm not sure how you could use these. I guess you just need a very carefully made prescription lens. Oh yeah, see? It's completely unfocused. Yeah, that's way better though. Oof. It's way better with the magnifier in there to make it look bigger. As far as the fit goes, I've always thought that Fat Shark really excels at making goggles that fit well. The goggles are not too heavy. I feel relatively light on my face and the fitment is fairly comfortable. Obviously, everyone's face is a different shape, so not everyone will have the exact same experience. Uh, there is definitely light leak around the nose. I find that that's really common with box goggles because if you are very tight around the nose, they'll put a lot of weight on the bridge of your nose. I don't find it super distracting, uh, but uh, it is there. Uh, they're probably... You can probably find some aftermarket foam if you want to upgrade the foam. The provided foam is kind of leatherette and is just fine. Uh, yeah, mm, that's what you get there. Now it's time for the flight testing of the goggles. And on some level, you might think this isn't really needed because we've got the exact same Walksnail receiver board. It's just in a different set of goggles and we know how it performs. By the way, this is the 28.32.10 firmware, which is the latest firmware at the time of this release. But there is one unknown quantity with these goggles and that is the performance of the antennas. Uh, so I'm gonna compare the Fat Shark Recon goggles to my Fat Shark Dominator goggles with the TrueRC X Air antennas on them, and we're going to see how they stack up. There's one other thing that's going to be different about this test from any test that I've done previously, which is that I finally got a capture card that is capable of capturing 100 frames per second out of the HD Zero goggles. So that's what you're going to be seeing. I don't know what YouTube is going to do with a 100 frame per second update, but go down there, make sure you're watching at the max resolution and the max frame rate, and you should be able to see every little skip and stutter, which I know is something that people have often wanted. Another advantage of this approach is that I am recording at 720p and 50 megabits per second in the absolute highest quality mode that I could possibly record in on my laptop. So we're also not relying on the DVR of the goggles to show us the image. 
This first test is going to be done with the Dominator goggles, and I've got TrueRC Xair antennas and Luminaire Axi HD Omnis. And I want you to pay attention to the way that I'm facing, because when you have patch antennas, you get more signal in front of you where the patches are facing and less signal behind you where they're not facing. The Recon has four patch antennas, so it may get better coverage in front, but we wouldn't want to overlook if it got worse coverage behind. So take a look down at the bottom of the screen, look at the megabit per second and look at the millisecond latency. And we're gonna to wanna to see how that performs here in this environment. This is basically directly behind myself and I'm just gonna slowly rotate uh, and uh, we will see how it performs. And you can see we're dropping down 23, 40 megabits per second. I think I'm at 700 milliwatts here. I'm not at the max power because I've found that sometimes these uh, systems don't give the absolute best performance at max power. So we're just gonna do a fair 700 milliwatts. Uh, and uh, we are on 50 megabits per second. So we can see it going down and coming up. And then we will head on over and we will go to the front of the beam and we will see how the signal looks when we are in the strong coverage pattern from the patch antennas. Uh, here we are coming around the side. We're around 40 megabits per second. Please ignore that RSSI warning. My antenna on this quad is completely borked. Uh, that doesn't mean anything, that LQ warning there, that doesn't, just ignore that. And here we come. Now we are on the strongest part of the beam and we should see basically perfect signal, more or less, uh, and it's holding somewhat, we can see the latency dropping and uh, we're just gonna keep going and I'm gonna circle around. I'm just gonna, I don't wanna just do one flight but I'm gonna kind of circle around uh, like this. Yeah, I'm gonna do these little circles and change how the antenna is pointing to try and get just a little bit better sort of measurement of how the performance is. So this is with two patches and two Omnis on the Dominator goggles. That is, to me, a, a good daily driver setup. Some people fly with four patches. Uh, I personally don't like the reduction in range behind me, but uh, that's how I've decided to run this test. Let's move on over and compare to the Recon. Now let's compare to the Recon goggles and uh, here's the setup that I've got. It is exactly the same as the setup for the Dominators. The only difference is that the frame rate is standard frame rate. So the latency is gonna be higher and that's because as I said earlier, the 60 FPS screen cannot show the 100 FPS frame rate. Uh, let's get it in the air. And in fact, let's put it side by side just so uh, yeah, well, let's do that so you can compare easier. As a reminder, in this part of the video, I am behind my head. So the patch antennas of the Recon should theoretically be giving it a disadvantage compared to the two Omnis that are on the Dominator. It should theoretically have an advantage when it comes to being out front because the Recon has four patches instead of only two. But I don't think that's what we see. It's a little hard to tell because of course we're not flying the exact same flight path at the exact same time, but it looks to me like the recon is holding at closer to 35, 40 megabits per second, whereas we're seeing a lot of times where the dominator drops down to closer to 20 megabits per second. And now I am in front of myself. So here, theoretically, the four patches of the recon should give it an advantage. Let's see, uh, it's holding in about the same. It looks like it's, hold no, a little better. We had a 20 there for the Dominator and a 40 for the Recon. Now we'll start the spinning around section uh, and we will see how that goes. Get back in there, boys. It sure does seem like the Recon is not doing worse in most situations than the Dominator. So I think my takeaway would be that the Recon's antennas are acceptable in terms of performance, certainly better than what you get with the Walksnail uh, antennas, and that the directionality of having four patches doesn't seem to be having a big effect on uh, being able to fly behind yourself. Uh, yeah, there you go. How does the Fat Shark Recon HD stack up to other ways of getting into the walk snail system? And we're not even going to talk about the Dominator HD because at this six or seven hundred dollar price point, I think that you're, if you're thinking about this $270 box goggle, you're not even really thinking, I think, at that high of a price point. And there are several other options to get into the system at a similar 
price point. And the first one is going to be a standalone video receiver connected to a set of existing analog goggles via an HDMI input. By the way, that's not what this is. This is an HD0 video receiver. The standalone Cadex Walksnail video receiver isn't out yet, so I can't show it to you. But it will connect to the front of the goggles, very similar to this. It will connect to the goggles input, similar to this, and it will provide probably a very similar experience. The upside of that is the price. This module is running currently, it's on special for 200 bucks for a video transmitter and the receiver. The standalone video receiver will probably come in under $200, uh, which means that if you have an existing set of analog goggles with an HDMI input, you could spend just $200 and get into the Walksnail system and uh, you have a perfectly decent set of analog goggles as a bonus. Just just like the Dominator goggles, this has no external inputs. It has no capability to do analog or HDMI or anything like that. Now, the disadvantage of the standalone module approach is that the specs on your goggles that you're going to use with the standalone module probably are not as good as the specs of, say, the high-end Dominator HD. They probably don't have a 1080p screen. They might have like a 960p screen, which is pretty close to 720p. So if you're running at 720p, then you're going to get okay resolution. And they're not going to do 100 frames per second. All the ex existing analog goggles only do 60 FPS, and so you would only be able to use the lower frame rate, which it's actually the same as the Recon, so maybe you're not losing anything there. But if you have an existing set of goggles, a $200 or less price point for the standalone module has got to be pretty compelling. You also, you also will get a much nicer experience with the eyepieces of these standalone goggles as opposed to a box goggle, at least for most people. But if you don't have an existing set of analog goggles, I think that the Recon HD starts to look more compelling because that $270 price point if you were to buy a used set of analog goggles, you would pay about $300, and then you'd be buying the standalone video receiver on top of that for another $200. Now you're in for 500 bucks, and then that's a significant chunk more money than a sort of completely self-contained solution like this. But there's one more goggle out there we have to consider, and this might actually be the hands-down best option, especially if you have a mixture of Walksnail and analog devices. You can buy the Skyzone Cobra X analog box goggle for about $250. It comes with the Skyzone Rapid Mix receiver, which is pretty good. Uh, all, although it, it also has an analog module bay, you could actually put a Rapid Fire or Fusion receiver in it if you want the absolute best in analog reception. And it's got an HDMI input, so for another $200-ish, you could put the standalone Walksnail video receiver module on it via the HDMI input, and for about 500 bucks, you have a really top tier receiver for your analog system and a perfectly functional Walksnail receiver. The only downside is going to be that the screen is 720p, 60 FPS, so once again you will be limited in terms of resolution and in terms of frame rate. But that's a really compelling option for people who still have some analog. But if you are 100% Walksnail or if you've got an analog solution that works for you and you're not looking to combine two goggles in one, I think the Fat Shark Recon on HD is going to be compelling to a lot of people at the $270 price point. If that's you, there are links down below in the video description. Uh, there are product links and there are affiliate links. What that means is that when you click that link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Just make sure you go and click that link before you do your shopping. Uh, what, where next? Where to next? Well, first of all, if you've got the walk snail system, you want to be able to get the best out of it. And I've got a setup guide. I'm going to put a card on screen showing the settings that I think are the best settings to use with the walk snail system today. I also want to tell you, if you're trying to power your goggles from a 6S battery, the JB Newbie Drone Smart Power Cable would be my recommendation. And I'll put a card on screen where you can check out why this is not just another voltage regulator power cable if you want to check that out. I'll see you there. Happy flying.